minutes. Madam Scott Cato. The campaign for tax justice has been largely reactive. As politicians, we have reacted to the news about laughably small tax payments from companies like Apple, Ikea and McDonald's. And we have been reacting to the outrage from those we represent about the way multinationals gain an unfair advantage in competitive markets and this deprives governments of revenue they need for public investment. For many years, the Green Group has been campaigning for strong political action to achieve tax justice. So we are delighted to welcome the launch or the relaunch of the Commission's proposal for a common consolidated corporate tax base and we welcome the message it sends. That the political institutions are listening to people again. That they are not continuing to chase after corporations who are always one step ahead. This is the sort of action we need if we are to rebuild people's confidence both in the European institutions and in our democratic politicians. The way we currently tax companies, treating subsidiaries from the same company as if they are completely independent entities, does not reflect the reality of their operations. Implementing a common and consolidated system for taxing companies across the Union would be a crucial step towards ending tax avoidance by global corporations. But I would also stress, as other colleagues have done, the importance of moving towards a minimum corporate tax rate across our continent, bringing an end to the race to the bottom on tax rates. My own country, the UK, is now at a crossroads. Will we follow Europe in promoting action to end corporate tax avoidance or follow the route being pushed by some hard Brexit supporters and become one of the world's leading tax havens? It is clear that the public interest is best served by following the EU's ambitious lead on tax policy and we must all work to ensure that Brexit does not encourage further tax competition between member states.